Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sandy. Uh, Dr. Meisu is one of my mentors. <laughs> so I am very, very honored that she actually introduced me. And, um, and of course, for me, it's a great honor and a privilege that I have to I give you this keynote speech today. Because this is, uh, this is really a journey that I would like to, to share with you. Because I also embraced this journey 30 years ago, or almost 30 years ago. So same as all of you, I also began my journey. And my message to you is that no matter what roadblocks you, or setbacks you may encounter, this is a journey that is worth pursuing. Uh, the most important thing is to make it your own. You have to carve your own path and you have to make it work for you. Uh, so this year, more than ever, we realize the importance of science and scientific rigor, the situation that we are in and the fast development of tools and means to ameliorate the burden of this pandemic are all thanks to science. Uh, and scientists like us putting our time and effort for the good of humanity. Do not forget that all the wonderful vaccines that we are so privileged to have available, not only for COVID-19, but for many other diseases are the result of decades of fundamental scientific research. I say fundamental and not basic research, and I say because I strongly believe that science being done in all the laboratories is really fundamental for the advancement of translational research, big data analysis, and applied research. Uh, if it wasn't for scientists working for decades on messenger RNA technology and ways to protect it into vesicles for delivery into cells, we would not have had such wonderful vaccines, and certainly we would not have obtained them in months rather than years. The same goes for the decades of research into viral vectors for other vaccines, such as the adenoviral vectors and others. This shows how interconnected all the science disciplines really are and how in the face of a catastrophic event, scientists are able to join forces and generate solutions. Also, these new discoveries will influence other fields besides infectious diseases, such as cancer and beyond. So with, with that in mind, you should be excited to begin your journey, realizing that nobody is an island in science and that we are all in this together. I took an unusual path for my journey. I made choices that others considered the wrong ones. For example, I stayed in the same place during my whole training, uh, but I did it what worked for me, for my family, and for my ability to enjoy life the way I want it. Uh, you can have it all, but you actually need to make compromises. I left my country of birth to pursue a scientific career that I could have pursued in my own country, but I did it for love love for my husband that was joining Mount Sinai as a postdoctoral fellow, but also love for science and love and have this, I had this curiosity about new places and new opportunities. So I grew up in a small town and I was always very hungry for new experiences. So it was hard for me to get into a PhD program in a foreign country uh, with little knowledge about the process. Remember, this was 1991, there was no internet. Um, so I worked for two years as a volunteer uh, to gain the knowledge and lab experience to be able to apply. It wasn't easy and I made sacrifices since I made no money. Uh, and my husband was a postdoc, we could not afford to go out to dinner. Uh, so we ate at home and only went out to drinks. So also, also this was also before bed bugs were an issue in New York. So every Wednesday we would walk around the Upper East Side in search for furniture that people put in the sidewalk. <laughs> so, but it was really like a way of living that we really enjoy every moment because it was making us uh, enjoy the city because it was really something that you could only do in New York. Uh, so when I was accepted into the program, I couldn't be happier. And we were able to enjoy dinner outside every once in a while after that. So I have to say that I had a wonderful experience as a PhD student. I learned a lot and discovered new things every day but I also failed many, many times. I made mistakes in the lab and I felt like a failure, but I surrounded myself with great people that lifted me up and helped me understand that failure and your ability to recover from it is part of the journey. One important thing for me was having good mentors. So I, I feel very fortunate to have had great mentors in my journey that taught me about virology, immunology, and also scientific rigor, but importantly, they believed in me. I also reminded myself every day of how fortunate I was 
I was doing what I loved, research and living in a wonderful city like New York that offers so many things. On top of that, I had a wonderful partner that had, had, has been fundamental to keep me grounded and happy along the journey. We tackle the hurdles together, although at times it is hard to take scientific criticism from your own husband. So we had to learn how to, what our boundaries were, and we made it work. So I am also a very optimistic person, and I try to always see the bright side. So I always say that I like Mondays, uh, and, and that I like people that like Mondays, because it is always the beginning of a week, and many things will happen in that week. We will start a new exciting experiment. We will submit a manuscript or give a lecture or attend a conference. This is what keeps me going, trying to always find the bright side of things. But one of the most important things about having a career in science is to learn how to accept rejection without taking it personally. Many of your ideas will be rejected. Some of your papers will be rejected. Your grants will be rejected, and it hurts. To this day, it still hurts because you put so much of yourself into it. But you have to learn how to pull yourself back up again and keep trying. Because of that, when your ideas are accepted and celebrated, your papers accepted and your grants funded, you feel extremely accomplished. So the main message I want to convey to you today is that there is no right or wrong path or journey. You define your own journey and you make it work for you. Anyone can be a mentor besides your thesis advisor, your lab mate, your roommate, any other faculty. So put on your lab coat, Try to like all your Mondays and surround yourself with people that believe in you and you will have a fantastic journey.